Salutations, Maplers. It's me, Zybel. And today, we're going to be revisiting how to whale in maple. Today, we're going to be looking at the new upcoming meta for gear in MapleStory GMS Reboot. With the final damage changes coming soon at the end of 2021, I hope to prepare a guide for players who want to get started on a projection toward the path they want to take for the best in slot items. I'll be saving weapons, sub-weapons, and emblems last, because they have the most exceptions to them. The first portion of this guide will be for gear, so if you don't really care about the rest, just skip to the end part. This guide aims to be future-proof and take into account all classes that MapleStory has to offer, as well as any additional weird caveats that players don't normally look at. Honestly, I'm just making this video because I noticed that a lot of guides on YouTube are outdated. Nixon has made a lot of changes to the way progression is done in Reboot and the way bosses provide gear, namely Galax, Princess No, and a few others. Without further ado, let's get right into it. In addition to this, throughout the video, I'll be using a term called transposing, as well as fodder. To better understand the video, transposing simply denotes that you use a specific item to give your Sweetwater gear better stats, gained through Star Force. Generally, this is the case for the Sweetwater Monocle and Sweetwater Pendant, though there are exceptions. I'll go further into detail for those respective sections when the time comes. Fodder gear denotes the use of the transfer hammer system in Maple, where you can transfer over the stats of a lower level item to a higher level item, provided that the level difference between the two is only 10 levels. Both of these systems comes at the loss of one star force, but are extremely useful in getting endgame gear. To start, I'll be going over rings, since they've changed the most with regard to the meta. For this explanation, I'll denote best in slot as BIS. One thing to keep in mind is the star force on your rings. If you're starting out or do not plan on going past 17 stars on a BIS ring, just stick to event rings for the time being. These event rings are roughly the same stat as any best in slot ring at 17 stars comparably. They act as great placeholders until you can eventually switch over to 17 stars or higher. At any point when you want to switch from an event ring to a best in slot ring, you can always recoup the event rings into drop gear, so don't worry too much about sunk costs going into the ring. Your realistic best in slot rings will be Superior Galax, Reinforced Galax Ring, Kana Ring, and the Guardian Angel Ring. I'll go further into detail in this video, but if you want a TLDR, these would be your best in slot. Prince's No now drops a best in slot ring known as the Kana Ring. Kana rings have recently been updated such that multiple copies of the ring can be obtained at a reasonable rate, making them the best in slot ring. Previously, only one copy of the ring could be obtained, so this effectively replaces the need for solid Galax rings. Meister rings used to be the best 4 slot ring, but their stats fully star forced only match that of a Kana ring. With the upcoming patch that contains the slime guardian boss, we should be looking forward to the new level 160 guardian angel ring. This ring is reasonably obtainable from the footage we have of KMS players, and roughly has rarity of uh, around a black bean mark. It gives the extra 1% stat per line on potential, in addition to its higher base attack and boss accessory set effect. Theoretically, you could swap out the Guardian Angel ring with either the Connor ring or the Meister ring. However, you can obtain a Connor ring spare much easier than you could a Meister ring spare, so it makes more sense to replace the Meister ring unless you have a 22 star Meister already. Something to note though is that you can use a Connor ring to fodder your superior Galax ring if needed. If you're crazy and want to go for the impossible rings that are truly best in slot, you should go for Endless Terror, obtained from Chaos Gloom and Glona's Heart, obtained from Phantom Forest. Endless Terror is a part of the Pitch Boss set and is level 200, so it gains an extra bonus stat. This ring's drop rate is notoriously bad as Berserked and Magic Eye Patch, so don't expect any drops anytime soon. As for Glona's Heart, it takes an additional 5 Shadow Knight coins per Star Force for a single attempt relative to the star it's on. For example, it takes 80 coins to go from 15 to 16, or it takes 105 coins to try and go from 20 to 21. Because you're capped by daily missions, this ring takes a projected time of a year or longer of farming just to get 22 stars. But it is a level 180 ring, so I guess it gets better stats? If you decide to go this route, 
Endless Terror replaces Reinforce Ring, and Glona's Heart will replace Kana Ring. The following rings aren't necessary to clearing harder content, but sometimes can replace a 4th slot ring since the skills they give are so powerful that they can be used in a slot without any enhancements. Namely, these rings are Ring of Restraint, the Weapon Jump S, D, I, or L, with the respective letter pertaining to your class's primary stat, and can be obtained from the Tower of Oz, from ring boxes that are level 7 or lower. The Weapon Jump's ring doesn't apply to Xenons or Demon Avengers, and, with the new update coming soon, you'll only be able to get the stat that pertains to your class's primary stat. Demon Avengers, however, will go for the Durability Ring. Keep in mind that all rings will need to be level 4 to actually be used. In some rare cases, some classes can use the Risk Taker Ring as a placeholder or a level 3 version of the required ring, such as the Ring of Restraint. For true endgame, you would want to use a combination of 4 22 stars and swap out your lowest damage ring with one of the rings mentioned. To summarize, a realistic endgame would be Superior Galax Ring, Reinforced Ring, Guardian Angel Ring, and Kana Ring, with the Roar 4 to replace the Kana Ring on Burst, and then swap back to the Kana Ring while the skill is still on cooldown. For those with the patience of a monk, or who have nothing better to do with their Maple account, the ideal configuration would be Superior Galax Ring, Guardian Angel Ring, Glona's Heart, and Endless Terror with the Roar 4 swap going to the Guardian Angel Ring. Next up is your pocket slot. You can unlock this by getting level 30 charm in your traits. This can be obtained fairly easily just by wearing equipment from bosses that give you charm until it levels up, or consuming one trait boost potion. Pockets are fairly straightforward, so you can basically just use anything you find for the pocket slot until you can do Pink Bean. Once you can get Pink Bean, or a carry, use the Pink Holy Cup. It is a part of the boss accessory set, and it can get boss flames on them, so it makes them the realistic best in slot. However, if you can do hard will, and are lucky enough to get a book, then you should just use that, since it counts toward the pitched boss set effect, and can get good boss flames. The color of the book denotes the stat that it will give, red giving strength, green dex, yellow luck, and blue for int. Personally, I've been running for a year now, and my party has yet to see even a single book draw. For Pendants, there's quite a few things to look at. Nothing much has changed with the Pendant meta, so for early game, we should be looking at any Horntail Necklace from Horntail, and the Mechanator Pendant from Arcarium. These both contribute to the boss success reset effect, and can go to 15 stars if needed. For mid game, we can switch to the Dominator Pendant obtained from Arcarium, and the reinforced Galax Pendant from Galax. The Dominator Pendant has fairly low drop rate, but both the Pendants might take a lot of farm anyway. Due to the Galax rework, running two Galax pendants of the same type and obtaining pendants as drops are no longer possible. If we're looking at reasonable fodder gear, we should try and obtain as many copies of the Dominator pendant as possible. Switching to realistic endgame, we can look at the superior Galax pendant as the first pendant, and a transposed Sweetwater pendant as our second pendant. To obtain the transposed Sweetwater gear, we will want to get a Dominator pendant to 16 stars, if possible, also try to get a good flame score on the pendant that suits your playstyle. After the transpose, the pendant will keep the flame because they count as boss flames. Make sure that the flames you want are final because you won't be able to reflame the individual pendant. I would personally settle for a flame score of 100, but it's also up to yourself. After transposing, it'll drop to 15, but retain the stats gained from the star force, effectively giving it an extra star. If your pendant gets destroyed in your attempt to star force to a higher tier, you don't need to repeat the transpose process since the item soul will retain the extra stats as long as you use the same soul. If you were confused by what boss flames or flame score meant, I'll provide useful links in the description that will explain what they are in detail. At any time you progress with your gear, you can usually turn your old pendants into drop or meso gear, with the exception of the dominator pendant since that usually has its own use outside of being a drop pendant. However, if you have a plethora of them, you might as well use them as drop or meso. You can also use a greed pendant obtained from Monster Park as a drop pendant. Keep in mind that the innate drop from this pendant only affects regular equipment, so this means that it doesn't affect droplets or arcane gear. Finally, for those of you that are lucky enough to aim for the pitch set boss effect, 
aim for the source of suffering, obtained from Varus Hilla, otherwise known as V Hilla. This is not to be confused with Hilla or Hard Hilla, as they are different bosses. Since this item is so rare, the ideal strategy is to star force them using a spare 21 star or higher superior Gallic's pendant as fodder gear, then try to tap the source of suffering to 21 or 22, depending on where you want to settle. This will replace the transposed Sweetwater pendant. If you want to use fodder gear for your superior Gallic's pendant, you can just use the Dominator pendant for that too. Next up are belts. It's pretty straightforward since they don't count as an accessory. For early game, just wear any belt that you can get your hands on. The easiest to get will most likely be the Cracked Gallix belt. For mid game, you'll want to move into Ayame's treasure from Princess No, Golden Clover belt from Pink Bean, or Reinforced Gallix belt from Gallix. There are arguably good points for any of these belts. All three of them count as fodder gear for end game as well, so it shouldn't make a difference. Players can now obtain multiple copies of Ayami's treasure, and it also gives a set effect if worn with the Kana Ring or Hayato's treasure, Shoulder. The Golden Clover Belt can get Boss Flame, and the Reinforced Gallix Belt can give a set effect if worn with other reinforced gear. Personally, I prefer the Golden Clover Belt because the drop rate is the highest among the three mentioned, and Pink Bean can be run daily, so it makes the perfect fodder gear. For end game, you'll want to use a Superior Gallix Belt. You can just fodder a 21 star or higher belt from the list mentioned earlier and tap to 22. For players coming back from the Tyrant belt meta, I would recommend just swapping. The attack gained from a 12 star or higher Tyrant belt doesn't outweigh the set effect and raw attack that the superior Gallic's belt gives. The 30% boss and IED from the Gallic's belt trumps the raw stat from the Tyrant belt. The next section covers hats. This section is really painful, so try and bear with me for this one. With the introduction of Zero into Reboot, we need to establish the best in slot guide for them since they're extremely new. There will also be a lot of conditionals since you'll want to switch your head around to keep certain set effects as you progress. For Zero, in early game, just grab whatever hat you can find. This is typically Pencilier gear. Afterwards, you'll immediately jump into Endgame by getting any of the helmets obtained from Chaos Rudibus. This is not to be confused with the CRA Warrior hat. You can look for the Crown from Queen, the clown hat from, well, clown, the KFP hat from chicken, or vellum hat. They all share the same base stat, so just use whatever you think looks best for you. This is the exception for zeros because it counts toward the lucky set effect. The lucky set means that the gear will count toward the set as long as you're equipping at least three of the items in that set. Due to zeros weapon stats and set effect being detached from each other, they can take advantage of the full four set CRA and a 5-set Abso or 5-set Arcane using this helmet. This helmet holds as the best in slot until you can defeat the Black Mage for the Genesis weapon. For every other class, the early game just looks super similar, and you can just use whatever hat comes to you. Mid-game evolves into using a Cygnus hat or a CRA hat. I would recommend just using the CRA hat because you're going to be revisiting that hat many times. As you progress, you'll want to combine a 5-set Abso with a 3-set Arcane. Eventually, when you purchase your first arcane weapon, you'll want to switch your hat to an Abso Lab hat to keep the 5 set effect from Abso. This will give you the massive increase in attack from the arcane, as well as the bonus 30% boss and 30% IED from the Abso set effect. If you're concerned about getting an Abso hat, you can also fodder a spare CRA hat into your Abso hat. When you're comfortable moving into endgame, with the full set of arcane gear, you'll want to switch back to your CRA hat to gain the 5 set arcane bonus and the 3 set CRA hat set effect. In some rare cases, if you have the money to spare, you can attempt to get a 21 or 22 star arcane hat to get 6 set arcane. The base stat of the arcane, stats given per star force, and the extra 1% stat per potential line is technically better than the CRA hat. Just keep in mind though that this investment is costly and usually only done for the flex. If you're able to obtain your Genesis weapon, you'll want to switch back to your handy dandy CRA hat, because the Genesis set actually counts as the lucky set effect. Face accessories are also really straightforward. You can use the condensed power crystal from Zakum for early game, and switch to the Sweetwater tattoo for end game. Either of them can be used for drop or meso gear, the meta for face accessory remains the same. Berserk is still considered the true best in slot, since it has the pitch boss set effect, and can get boss flames, but I mean, good luck getting one. 
Similarly, the eye accessory meta remains the same. You can use the aquatic letter eye accessory from Zakum for early game. For mid game, you can use either a non transposed Sweetwater monocle or a black bean mark from Pink Bean. The black bean mark is generally considered better than the Sweetwater monocle because you can go up to 20 stars and also get boss flames. So a non transposed monocle is really only better at 21 stars or higher. For end game, you want to get yourself the elusive pat mark from Papulatus. The drop rate for this is pretty bad, but if you can get one, you'll want to treat it in a similar manner to the Dominator Pendant explained in the Pendant section. You should get this eye accessory to 16 stars and get a good flame that you're comfortable with, since it counts towards the boss flame. You'll then transpose the item in Commercy onto a Sweetwater Monocle, which you can use as your best in slot eye accessory. Transposing will give this item the extra star force and have it retain the flames as well. For true endgame, you can fight Hard Damien and get the Magic Eye Patch, which is considered the true best in slot due to its pitch boss set effect. Honestly, the top, bottom, and overall meta hasn't ever really changed. For early game, just wear whatever you find that can get 12 star force. After that, you can move into endgame with the Chaos Rutabus top and bottom. You can also use a Cygnus overall if you somehow get that before the CRA top and bottom, but you always want to end with the CRA. The CRA top and bottom count as two items, so two times the items means double the flames, double star force stats, double the potential lines, and a nice set effect to boost. This always outweighs the stats of a single overall, even arcane. Next up are boots. For early game, we consider three potential gear. Pencilier dropped by mobs, Cygnus boots dropped by Empress Cygnus, and Nova boots dropped by Magnus. Pencilier's advantage is that you can obtain these items everywhere you train, and they're super easy to get copies of. Cygnus may take a while to farm, but it gives a nice set effect if worn with other Cygnus gear and can get boss flames. The Nova boots boast a higher base stat and attack, but don't think about sinking any star force into them as they fall under the old tyrant meta. Once you move into mid game, the only boots you should use are the Absolap boots. If you want to fodder Absolap boots, you can get the antique root boots obtained from the Rutabus store. Other fodder gear exist, such as the Oyamatsumi shoes, but getting these drops from Renmaru are a bit more random since you can get these items from any class in the reboot. The antique root boots are more consistent and usable by every class. As for the end game, the meta still remains arcane boots. Since Nexon doesn't allow for multiple piercings on your ears, I guess I'm just forced to cover the one earring slot. For early game, just grab the cracked Gallix earrings or the solid Gallix earrings from Gallix, the Isidus earrings from Horntail, or the Will o' Wisps from Hilla. The former are pretty consistent drops from easy and normal Gallix, while the latter are good because they provide boss flames. Of the four, I personally think the Will o' Wisps is the best. When you go to mid game, you can move to reinforced earrings. Get as many copies of these as you can, because both are good for the reinforced Gallic set effect and good as fodder gear for your superior Gallic earrings down the line. If you don't want to farm these, you can farm at Rocky Masks in Forsaken Excavation 2 for the Shaman earrings, or try and craft the Meister earrings. All three options are good for fodder gear, but the reinforced are realistically the easiest to get copies of. For endgame, you'll just upgrade to superior Gallic earrings. You can fodder any of the earrings mentioned earlier to 21 stars plus and taps to 22. After the Gallic's rework, earrings now drop so you can technically get spares from Helix a little easier. Due to the rework of the pendants, the meta is no longer Sweetwater earrings or Meister earrings. Even though additional stats are given on them, completing the set effect for 4 piece superior Gallic's outweighs any other benefit. You really just can't beat the 30% boss and IED. If you're trying to make one of your earrings drop or meso gear, you can honestly just pick any of them. I'd probably choose the will o wisps or Deicetus since you can get them pretty early on and a bunch of copies of them just by doing dailies. Shoulders are super similar to belts, and really straightforward. For early game, just grab the royal black metal shoulder from Magnus, the Cygnus shoulders from Emperor Cygnus, or the Hayato's treasure since you can get multiple copies from Princess Snow. The royal black metal shoulders are the easiest to get while Cygnus Shoulders offer boss flames, and the Hyadu's Treasure offers a nice set effect. During mid game, you'll want to use the Absolab Shoulders, since they provide the Absolab set effect. Similarly, for end game, you'll want to use the Arcane Shoulders, the meta remains the same. Gloves are probably the weirdest to explain, since they give the most benefits outside of your weapon, secondary, or emblem. 
Gloves are special because they're the only piece of equipment that can get percent crit damage line. Percent crit damage lines always outweigh the percent stat line, since it provides more significant value in the damage formula that contributes to your total range. Additionally, they contain a legacy line that you can obtain only from Master Craftsman Cubes or Meister Craftsman Cubes, called the percent auto steal. You won't see this using any other type of cube, such as red or black cube. Since the meta hasn't changed, in early game, you can just use a Pencilier Glove or a Cygnus Glove. The Pencilier is easier to farm, but the Cygnus Glove gives boss flames. For mid game, you can swap to Absolab. If you're concerned about Absolab spares, fodder, antique root gloves obtained from the Shadow Market in Helysium. The shop there uses coins obtained from defeating Magnus, so make sure to do Magnus consistently if you want to fodder gear for your Absolab gloves. Endgame players will just swap to Arcane when they're ready. Ideally, players will usually use two sets of gloves, one being their primary damage glove that has crit damage lines, and the other glove having percent auto steal. When players use Master or Meister cubes on any type of glove, you can roll a legacy line called percent auto steal. This mechanic allows you to farm Meso at a more efficient rate, so you can use these gloves when you're Meso farming. However, the benefit gained for percent auto steal is marginally better. The difference is almost minuscule, but I like to think that any extra source of Meso counts. Hearts are super quick to explain, just go for anything that's permanent. Reboot currently offers only three hearts which are all event based hearts, so grab one where you can. The permanent Lydium heart is the worst of the three, since it's a lower level and thus gives lower percent values per potential line. The best in slot would be both the Fairy heart and the Glimmering Wonderoid heart. Both offer the same percent cap per potential line. However, the Glimmering Wonderoid Heart is slightly better, since it can go to 15 stars, and the Fairy Heart can only go to 8. However, if you only have the chance to get the Fairy Heart, you're not missing out on too much stat. Since Reboot was created, I would consider the Glimmering Wonderoid event pretty rare, since it only comes around once every year or two. Capes are also pretty straightforward. In the early game, you'll want to use Pencilier Cape, the Enraged Zacum Cape from Chaos Zacum, Cygnus Capes from Cygnus, the Tyrant Cape from Magnus, or the Wings of Fate from Mushroom Shrine Tales Questline. Of the five, the strongest is definitely the Wings of Fate, since it has a good base attack and you can reroll the flames on it for free as many times as you need to. On top of this, if you complete the quest line, you can even add some Meso percent line on the wings itself as an inherent bonus. However, the quest line does take a very long time. Complete most of this quest line unlocks the Threads of Fate which you can use for crafting EXP potions and wealth acquisition potions, otherwise known as WAPs. <coughs> Anyhow, the Pencilier is the easiest to get. The Cygnus and Zacken Capes come with the boss flames, and Tyrant Capes from Hard Magnus have a nice chunk of attack. You won't sink any Star Force into the Tyrant, but a clean one is always nice to have. The Cape meta is still pretty much the same, so you'll want to change to an Absolab Cape for mid-game due to the set effect. If you want to fodder your way into Absolab, you can get copies of the Enraged Zacum Cape as spare gear. The end game remains the same using Arcane Cape as usual. Badges are now pretty easy to understand, since Nexon has removed potable badges. If you happen to have the Sengoku badge or Ghost Ship Exorcist badge from the removed content, those would be your best in slot. However, for the rest of us, we would just use the Crystal Vintage badge obtained from Magnus as a realistic best in slot. However, for the extremely wealthy, you can just dish out 105 bill, that's right, 105 billion mesos for the 7 days badge in the upcoming patch to reboot. It gives 10% IED, so I guess reboot really is pay to win? If you clear Black Mage and obtain his badge, just use it for the pitch boss set effect. And remember, we don't congratulate the Lucker Dogs. Honestly, I'll just group medals and titles in together, since they're pretty much the same to me. For medals, you'll want to aim for the 7 day monster parker, obtained by clearing monster park for 77 times for each day of the week. That's 7 times a day for 7 days a week, for 11 weeks, for a grand total of 539 monster park runs. It gives 10% ID, but takes a long time to farm. So in the meantime, just use any medal that gives you good damage boost, such as the Intellian Guardian medal, or event medals. Titles don't really count as an equip, but I guess you can wear them over your head, so I'm including it. 
you can just use anything that gives you IED or boss damage. This would be your event title such as Holy Pink Beanity or Maple Cafe. If you can't get the event ones, go for the Root Abyss Master, obtained by clearing the CRA bosses 10 times each boss. If this proves to take too long, you could just grab any monad title. Nexon has basically all but confirmed the removal of Dark slash Doom Totems. So, I mean, if you have one, then you're set. That's the best in slot. Otherwise, for us normies, we have to use the Afterland Totems. It's available super early on, so you can just get them whenever. Just make sure not to throw them away, even if you have no use for a third stat, since you can't get another copy. For Demon Avengers, though, they would farm the U Garden Totems. Technically, these would be the best in slot for everybody else, but they only last a month, and the incense has a pretty low drop rate, so if you want to spend a bunch of time farming these, be my guess. So, if you've made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could help the channel by hitting the like, smashing that subscribe button, and turning on the bell notifications for new videos. It'll do wonders for my sanity. Now, on to the good stuff. Now that we've gotten through all the gear changes, we can take a look at the weapon, secondary, and emblem, which will be denoted as WSE. These will have the largest contributing factors to your damage, since they're the only place of gear that can roll percent attack or percent magic attack lines, as well as the percent ID line. There's also percent boss damage lines, but your emblem can't roll that. For early game, just use Pencilier, Cygnus, or Sweetwater. Pencilier drops super easily from mobs, as does Sweetwater, ever since they buffed the Sweetwater item drop rate in Commercy Voyages. The Cygnus weapon drops from Emperor Cygnus, and it comes with additional boss flames. During mid-game, you can use the Fafnir weapon from Rudibus. You can also invest in this weapon if you want, since you can fodder it later down the line for your Absolab weapon, if that's what you eventually want to swap to. Specifically for Kaisers, they can also use the Liberated Kaiserium, since it has such an enormous amount of raw attack. However, it's not too good for bossing, since it doesn't complete any set effects, but would be useful for grinding or mobbing. For endgame, everyone should go to the Arcane weapon. If you play long enough to reach Black Mage and liberate the weapon, then obviously the best in slot is your liberated Genesis weapon. It has the highest attack of any weapon out there and contributes to the lucky set effect. There are quite a few exceptions for secondaries, so I'll split them into classes that use shields, demon classes such as Demon Slayer and Demon Avenger, Kanas, and Dual Blades. Then there's everybody else. For everyone else, you'll just use any level 100 secondary you can find. For endgame, you could switch to the Princess Nose secondary, which gives slightly better stats. I'm going to take roll call, so please listen up class. Mage Shield users, Battle Mage, Beast Tamer, Blaze Wizards, Evan, Ice Lightning, Fire Poison, and Bishop. Please stand up. For please stop using Mace of Explosion and pay attention. For these classes, your initial early game will comprise of any level 100 secondary you can find, as mentioned earlier. For endgame, you can craft the Deimos Shield, Deimos Warrior Shield, and Deimos Shadow Shield, respectively, for your class. These will drop as recipes from Empress Cygnus and be your realistic best in slot, since they can go to 20 stars. For Warrior specifically, Reboot has given us the chance to get Terminus Defender as your true best in slot shield. However, I don't know a single person with the Terminus Defender, so please hit me at the, in the DMs so I can uh, flex to my friends saying that I know somebody with a Terminus Defender shield, please. Thank you. Demon Slayers have their evolving secondaries and can use anything that follows the, the traditional classes. However, I'll make note that clearing normal and hard Damien has a rare chance to drop the Rune Force shield, which gives 10% final damage at the expense of increased extra damage to you. But I mean, who doesn't love final damage? This will be your best in slot if you ever see one. But... Kanas don't have a secondary, since they use two weapons, because they're not like the other girl- I mean, classes. Their best in slot is just the arcane fan, or whatever highest tier weapon gives them raw magic attack. The reason being that their Haku only scales with the secondary's magic attack. This will go into a separate tab called Haku. For Dual Blades, the answer is a little complicated, but their best in the slot is actually the Sweetwater Katara. You'll want to start out using a Fafnir Katara or any level 150 Katara for early game. Then you'll want to get it to 16 stars and take advantage of the transpose system. 
Once done, you transpose the Fafnir weapon onto the Sweetwater Katara. Why is this the best in slot, you ask? Because the Arcane Katara, which you would normally expect to be best in slot, doesn't have the 30% boss or 10% IED attached to the weapon's inherent stats. This means the Sweetwater Katara gains a full bonuses of the extra 1% potential line since it's level 160 and can go up to 22 stars, has the extra star force from Transpose, the extra 30% boss, and the 10% IED that the Arcane Katara doesn't give. Comparatively, the Arcane Katara fully star forced gives slightly more attack, but due to the damage formula for dual blades having less weight on their attack value, the 30% boss and IED heavily outweighs the slightly extra attack. Lastly, we've got emblems. Just use whatever level 100 emblem you can get from the storyline quest. Be careful not to drop them, since you can only get one copy of it, unless you're a Kaiser, Angelic Buster, or Xenon. This would be a realistic best in slot, aside from any event emblems you might be able to find. Technically, if you defeat Saren, and you could also get Mitra's Rage, this is the true best in slot for your class, because it adds to the pitch boss set effect, but if you're able to kill Saren, then why are you watching this video? That's it for the best in slot gear progression guide. The items selected were based off my own analysis and game experience, ranging from ease of access, progression level, flame scores, set effects, and a few other factors. This doesn't include the weight of cubing, since different players progress in the game at different paces. But it's generally still the same. If you disagree with anything I've said, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Otherwise, I hope this guide helped any returning players from any era of the game get back into Maple. Now, I know you're tired of hearing me blabber for half an hour, so that's the end of this video. I'll leave some information slides on which bosses drop what best in slot gear you'll need for progression. Once again, hit that subscribe button if you want to support the channel, and thanks for watching. Take it easy, Maplers.